A brand new NASCAR Cup Series season is right around the corner. Today, I'm going to attempt to do something I don't think I've done before. I'm going to rank every active NASCAR Cup Series driver. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove special episode today. This episode is presented by the NASCAR Hall of Fame. With the beginning of a new NASCAR season comes new reasons to celebrate the history and heritage of NASCAR. Whether it's learning about the legends who established the sport or experiencing the sights and sounds of NASCAR from car design to race day, you'll quickly find that the Hall of Fame is more than just a museum, it's a shrine to the history, heritage, and future of the sport we all love. You can get behind the wheel of realistic racing simulators or try out the pit crew challenge. You can walk down Glory Road, which features cars specifically curated by Dale Earnhardt Jr. himself. And speaking of Dale Jr., the updated Hall of Honor commemorates the latest Hall of Fame inductees, including Junior, Mike Stefanik, and Red Farmer. I've been to the Hall of Fame a couple times now myself, and it is a treat. If you're a longtime NASCAR fan, or if you're just now getting into the sport, the NASCAR Hall of Fame has something you will love. I highly recommend. To explore more and book your visit, head to nascarhall.com. You can click that link down in the description below. Thanks to the Hall of Fame for supporting the show. I fully expect to make enemies out of many of you here today, but but as the title suggests, I'm going to rank every full-time NASCAR Cup Series driver today. And I'm gonna to try to base this list solely off of driver talent. Like sure, drivers who've been in good equipment lately and have won a lot of races will probably be higher on my list. I'm gonna to try to be as objective as possible. This list is based off who I think the most talented drivers are. I may also factor in momentum, like who's been better lately. The idea is who are the best drivers right this second? Not 10 years ago, not five years ago, not 20 years ago, right now. Here is my list. No disrespect to Cody Ware, but somebody had to be at the bottom of this list. He ran pretty well at the Clash a couple weeks ago. Rick Ware Racing has an alliance of sorts with Stuart Haas this year, so I fully expect Cody Ware to crack the top 20 or top 25 a few times. But unfortunately right now, I just don't have enough data to go off of. At 32, I'll go with the rookie, Todd Gilland. The guy has made zero Xfinity starts in his career. He has two Truck Series wins across nearly four full-time seasons in top-level equipment. The stats don't jump out at you. He's young, he's inexperienced. I don't expect much from Gilland this season. He's 32nd. 31, let's talk about BJ McLeod. Now, every time I hear a driver talk about BJ McLeod, they have nothing but great things to say about him. But unfortunately, he's never really been in good equipment, so I, I don't know what to make of him. I gotta put him somewhere on this list. I'm gonna leave him at 31 for the time being. Let's talk about another 2022 rookie. Harrison Burton was great in 2020 in the Xfinity Series. He won four races. He followed that breakout year up with a goose egg in 2021. Didn't win any races last year. Was still competitive, still in the hunt, made the playoffs and everything, but last year did not really impress me. He's in the Cup Series now at the ripe young age of 21. Inexperienced, he's a work in progress. I think he has the potential to be good in the future, but I think this first year will be kind of a struggle more times than not. That's my prediction. Some of y'all might disagree with this one, but Ty Dillon, he hasn't won anything in NASCAR since 2014. Sure, he was in bad equipment in the Cup Series for many years, but like last year, he made a few starts with Joe Gibbs Racing in the Xfinity Series and couldn't crack the top 10. Got caught up in other people's messes some, but also caused the messes in others. Ty Dillon does not impress me. He's got some experience, so maybe he'll have some success this year, but right now I got him at number 29. This one hurts. I keep waiting for Corey LaJoy to just break out and have a big schwow moment. And granted, we have not seen Corey LaJoy in good equipment since like, I don't know, maybe his K&N days. I gotta go with what I've seen recently and you know, 2021 with Spire, his numbers were really no better than his numbers with GoFast, a woefully underfunded program. One top 10 both years and actually led the same number of laps both years, 13, lucky number 13. Finished 29th in points last year. I, I gotta put LaJoy at 28 for now. I'm hoping this is the with the next gen that he takes a big step forward and shows us some of that super shoe potential once again. At 27, he's not technically a rookie, but he kind of feels like one. He's actually a Cup Series winner, in the record books at least, Justin Haley. I like Justin Haley. Maybe this is a little too low, but I can't look past the fact that all four, all four of his career Xfinity wins 
have come at super speedways. I can't help but feel like Justin Haley is kind of a one trick pony. Like it's great that he's so good at super speedways. Those are some of the most popular and best paying races on the schedule. <laughs> he did win three truck races back in 2018. He was sixth in points last year in Xfinity. Maybe I have Justin Haley a little too low, but I'm just leaving him room to grow. I think by the end of 2022, he'll be a few positions higher on this list. Daniel Suarez. You cannot disrespect the guy. He's a former Xfinity Series champion just five, six years ago. And he did win three races that year. Now, his Cup Series tenure has not been great. He was winless at JGR, went to SHR, was winless at SHR, then ran around in circles with Gaunt for a year. Now he's with Trackhouse. And last year, very inconsistent. I think a lot of that's chalked up to a brand new team. Suarez had a couple standout performances. This could be a make or break year for Daniel Suarez. I still believe he has what it takes to be a perennial playoff contender, but some of that potential has slipped away in recent years. So I got Suarez at 26. This is a tough guy to place. Cole Custer, he's young. He's got two years under his belt in the Cup Series. Now, he did win at Kentucky last year or in 2020. But before that win, he was like 24th in points all year. But okay, he's a rookie. I'll let that slide. Last year, though, as a sophomore, he was outside the top 25 in points most of the year. Maybe that's just SHR. They were off last year, obviously. I'm putting Cole Custer ahead of some guys like Haley and Suarez because, you know, just two years ago in 2019, Cole Custer did win seven Xfinity races. He has to be talented, right? You can't just go luck your way into seven Xfinity wins in a single season. I don't know where to place him. He's a little lower on my list right now than other SHR drivers, just because we have not seen that Cup Series success shine. This year with the next gen, hopefully SHR turns it around. This is a big year for Cole Custer. For now, I have him at 25. Another difficult guy to place is Michael McDowell. He's a veteran, but he spent the last decade plus in lower tier equipment. Last year was the best season of his career by far. He did get five top tens in the 34 car, won the Daytona 500. So I'll give him some points for that. He's also a solid road course racer. He's excited about the next gen car. For now, I have him at 24. I'll say this. I fully expect Bubba Wallace to improve on this position by the end of the season. I think he'll have a better year this year than he did last year. I think 23-11 racing will come around. But for now, I have Bubba Wallace at 23rd. He did win four truck races back in the day. That's notable. Martinsville was one of his, his best tracks. That's a driver's track. And to Bubba Wallace's credit, he's been on the rise maybe in the last few months. Like All three of his top fives last season came in the second half of the year. So the team showed albeit slow, but steady improvement throughout the season. He's proven he's an above average super speedway racer at this point, but I just don't know how high that ceiling really is. I go back to his Xfinity days with Roush, and sure, maybe he wasn't getting the best Roush cars at the time. Maybe his equipment was worse than his teammates. But like in 2015, he finished seventh in points that year while his teammate, Chris Buescher, went out and won the championship. I know that was six, seven years ago. Drivers can grow and improve a whole lot. I think Bubba Wallace has and will continue to do so. But for the time being, I have him at 23rd. Speak of the devil at 22, Chris Buescher. He was the 2015 NASCAR Xfinity Series champion. He came back to Roush at the start of the 2020 season, effectively replacing Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He got eight top tens in 2020 and eight again in 2021, which were both a little more than what Stenhouse was doing on a year-to-year -year basis, but he hasn't broke through to win, and he hasn't made the playoffs either. Kind of like Corey LaJoy, kind of like a few other drivers on this list, I'm really waiting for Chris Buescher to have that wow year. We had a wow moment last year at Homestead when he drove up and won a stage, but He's yet to put together a long period of success since joining the Cup Series. I know he's not in the best equipment, but he did win an Xfinity title like half a decade ago. I think that deserves some points. Chris Buescher won one Xfinity title for Roush. Ahead of him, I got to go with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who won two Xfinity titles for Roush back in 2011 and 2012. I mentioned how Buescher's stats with Roush have been a little more impressive lately than Stenhouse's were, but Stenhouse did have 2017, where he won two super speedway races, made the playoffs, and since he got traded basically to JTG Doherty, his numbers have been almost identical to what they were at Roush. He hasn't won anything yet, but top fives, top tens, in the same era. I'm putting Stenhouse ahead of Buescher and Bubba because all three of these guys spent a good amount of their Xfinity Series careers with Roush. Stenhouse was by far the most successful of the three. He's also the most experienced driver of the three at this point in their careers. So I have Ricky Stenhouse Jr. ahead of them. He's at 21. At number 20, I'm going with Ross Chastain. Go back to 2018 for a second. Ross Chastain was a grinder. Just a good old watermelon farmer making laps, making friends in the garage, trying to get that big break. And in 2018, he got that with Chip Ganassi. And in just his second Xfinity start with Ganassi, he won. 
That was a great story at the time. He backed that up by going to Nice Motorsports in the trucks in 2019 and winning three races and coming up this close to winning a truck championship. He finally got a good Cup Series opportunity last year with Ganassi. Finished 20th in points, not bad. Eight top tens, three top fives. I mean, it pains me to say this, but all those numbers were way better than Matt Kenseth did in that car a year earlier. Maybe Kenseth was old, he was washed, sure. But Ross Chastain had some flashes last year. Good enough for me to put him in the top 20 of best drivers in the sport today. These rookies, man, they're tough to place, but I'll put Austin Cindric up pretty darn high here, at least compared to the other couple of rookies we've already talked about. Think about it, Cindric is two corners away, a bump and run away from being back-to-back -back Xfinity Series champion. 13 wins over the past three years in Xfinity, and you know, for the longest time, he was thought of as a kind of a road course specialist, but he's evolved. Like last year, four of his five wins came on ovals. And speaking of uh, road course specialists, let's go with another Ford development driver, Chase Briscoe. I'm putting Briscoe ahead of Cindric simply because he's a little older, he has more experience, but also because in 2020, while yes, Cindric won the championship, Chase Briscoe led the series with nine wins. His rookie season was not great, but I think a lot of that can be chalked up to SHR. He did almost steal a win at the Indianapolis road course. I think Briscoe could take a big step forward this year if Stuart Haas racing cars are back underneath them a little. I feel like we never talk about Austin Dillon anymore, but the guy's made the playoffs four of the past six seasons. He's won some of the biggest races in the sport. He's become a more consistent driver. He was the 2013 Xfinity Series champion. I think Austin Dillon deserves a little, not a lot, but a little more credit than he typically gets these days. I still have a soft spot for Eric Jones. Any driver that outdueled Kyle Busch in equal equipment to win the Southern 500 should get some serious points. The guy won a truck series championship, went into the Xfinity series and won four races in his one and only full-time Xfinity season. Then 2020 sure was a bit of a struggle in the cup series side. He lost his ride with Joe Gibbs racing, but looking at 2021, Christopher Bell was only slightly better than Eric Jones and he had Adam Stevens on his pit box. I feel like Eric Jones gets lost in the shuffle, but it was wasn't that long ago he was a highly touted Joe Gibbs racing prospect and he hasn't slipped much. I, I still think Eric Jones is a top 16 driver. Let's talk about a veteran, Eric Almarola. There's no way to slice it. 2021 was a bad year, except for New Hampshire. A lot of people like to pile on Almarola, and sure, he's never lit the world on fire, but he's a veteran. He's driven for a multitude of teams. He has experience. And since he got to Stuart Haas Racing, he's made the playoffs every single year, four years straight. He only has two wins in that same time period, which is why he's lower than a lot of the other veteran drivers on this list. But Eric Almarola still deserves some credit for his consistency since joining SHR. Next up, I've got Alex Bowman. I know you guys are probably thinking, Eric, he just won four races. Shouldn't he be a bit higher on the list? That's fair. That's fair. But you know, aside from those four wins, he was by far the most inconsistent Hendrick driver last year. In fact, his average finish of 15.1 was worst on the team. And actually, if you average out Larson, Elliott, and Byron's average finish last year, that comes out to 11.3. So nearly four positions better than Bowman's last year. I like Bowman. He's certainly not a hack by any means, but he's also not as highly touted as some of his Hendrick teammates deserve to be. It wasn't all that long ago that Christopher Bell was a terror in the lower ranks of NASCAR, much like Eric Jones, but Christopher Bell went into the Xfinity Series and across two full-time seasons won 15 combined races. Last year was his first year with Joe Gibbs racing in the Cup Series. He had Adam Stevens on his pit box, a two-time championship crew chief. They won a race together, a very impressive win at the Daytona Road Course, but they were also very up and down. They made the playoffs, obviously, but a 15.8 average finish, that's only slightly better than Eric Jones did in that car the year before. Maybe my view of Bell is a little distorted because I keep thinking about all his dirt racing success. We've seen him win a lot of big dirt races in recent years. And that's not entirely fair to the other drivers on this list because I'm trying to focus on are they the best NASCAR driver, stock car driver. But what Christopher Bell has proven is that he's diverse. He can race on dirt. He can win on intermediate tracks as he's done in the Xfinity Series. He's great at flat tracks like New Hampshire. He's also great at road courses apparently. So Christopher Bell, very versatile. He deserves a high spot on this list. William Byron's rise through the lower ranks was meteoric. 2016, he won seven races in the truck series and you know, blew a motor or he would have won the championship. Graduated the Xfinity series in 2017, he won four more races and that time won the championship. Fast forward to 2021, he won a race early in the season. He showed great consistency throughout much of the year. Had good speed in the playoffs, but just couldn't seem to get out of other people's way. Began at Darlington when he got damaged. Got run over by Tyler Reddick at the Roval. You know, he had a bunch of issues in the playoffs that knocked him out maybe a little early. We forget how 
young William Byron is, I think he's poised to take a huge step forward sooner rather than later. For now though, I got him at number 12. At number 11, let's talk about the two-time, that's right, two-time Xfinity Series champ, Tyler Reddick. Made the playoffs in just his second year with Richard Childress Racing. That first win, that first cup win is coming, and it's coming soon. I remember back in 2018 when Reddick won that title for Junior Motorsports, I think a lot of people kind of dismissed it, and, and maybe justifiably so. He'd only won a couple of races that year. He'd been kind of up and down, more inconsistent than other drivers in the field. He just got hot at the right time. But he silenced the doubters in 2019 when he switched teams, went over to Richard Childress racing and went out and won another championship. Won more races, was more dominant. Since then, Tyler Reddick's been on everyone's radar. He's had a few flashes in the Cup Series. I think 2022, he takes a big, consistent step forward. So he's at number 11. Ryan Blaney has won a race five years in a row. That's impressive. Last year, he broke out and got three wins and was, I'd say, arguably the best driver out of Team Penske. Obviously, as you can tell on this list, I have him slightly below his recent Penske teammates. And that's only because guys like Logano and Keselowski have been doing this for much longer than Blaney has. Like, Keselowski's won a race like 10 or 11 years in a row. Same goes for Logano. So Blaney had a breakout year last year, but you know, if we look at his seven career cup wins, three have come from super speedways. He got that fluky win at the Roval in 2018. I hate to pick him apart like that because I like Ryan Blaney a lot. I think he's really, really good. Good enough to be in my top 10, but I don't think he's quite surpassed some of his teammates like Joey Logano. I know, I know Keselowski's not his teammate anymore, but I think he's still just a notch or two below those veteran drivers. So Blaney himself has become a veteran. So top 10 for Blaney. At number nine, I've got Kurt Busch. He won a race every single year he was at Chip Ganassi Racing. That's commendable. He made the round of eight back in 2020. Now, in fairness, maybe he slipped a little because 2021 was probably his worst year at Chip Ganassi Racing, statistically speaking, but he still dominated Atlanta and won that race. He's one of the oldest drivers in the field, but that experience is still extremely valuable. I think Kurt Busch has a knack for not only making his car and his team better, but for also making the team around him better, the rest of the organization a bit better. So I think Kurt Busch is going to do good things for 2311 this year. I got him at number nine. He's, he's a former cup champion. I know it was 17, 18 years ago, but he did win a cup championship back in the day. At number eight, I've got Brad Keselowski. As I just mentioned, he's won a race, I think, every year for the last 11 years. I'm putting Keselowski ahead of Blaney, even though Blaney had a better 2021, because like I mentioned, Keselowski's been a championship contender for the better part of a decade. And he has won a Cup Series championship, something Blaney has not done yet. So I have Brad Keselowski a bit higher. This year, he's in for a <laughs> he's in for a rude awakening, I'm afraid. I really hope those Roush Fenway Keselowski cars are more competitive. I hope that they're able to crack the top 10 consistently, but there's no guarantee that it'll be easy over there. Still, Brad Keselowski is a more than capable driver. He's a championship caliber driver. He deserves a top 10 spot. I've got him at number eight. Now let's talk about his longtime teammate, Joey Logano. Logano just won the clash. First winner in the next gen era. Good for him. The 2018 series champion. And if we look at championship four appearances, which I think should be a much more talked about stat, Logano has been to four of them, which is tied for second behind only Truex, Harvick, and I think Kyle Busch. I'd probably have him one or two spots higher, but last year he did only win one race and it was Bristol Dirt, which is kind of a, an outlier. So I maybe bumped him down a position because of that, but he's started 2022 off very, very strong. At number six, Chase Elliott. I mean, the guy's been to the championship for two years in a row. He won the title in 2020. And I thought this stat was crazy. His rookie year was 2016. He's never finished worse than 10th in points, even his rookie year. Think about recent rookies. They have struggled. Many years, rookies, even with good teams, don't make the playoffs. Chase Elliott's won multiple races a year for four years straight now. He's turned into a perennial all-star, a perennial title contender. Only two wins last season, sure, but he was still very consistent, made the championship four. Good enough for number six. At number five, Martin Truex Jr. We forget about his dominance during the Cole Pern era. From 2016 to 2019, that's four years, he won a championship, obviously. He also won 23 cup races. And even in the post Cole Pern era, last two years, he still won five combined races, made it to the championship four, was one spot away from winning the title this year, or last year, 2021. He's made the championship four, four out of the last five seasons, and he really has no weaknesses. We know he's a great short tracker. We know he's a great road course racer. He's won a ton of intermediates back in the day. At tracks that are considered driver's tracks, Martin Truex Jr. typically shines. He's a top five driver in the sport. We're getting close to the end. At number four, 
I've got Kyle Busch. And this felt weird because I think for years I would have easily considered Kyle Busch top three, at least based on talent, best driver, which is basically what this list is. But the clear dip in performance the last two years shouldn't be dismissed so easily. Sure, he was just one spot away from making the championship for this past season, but only three wins total across the last two years, throw in a crew chief swap in the middle for good measure. If you combine 2018 and 2019, his average finish was 8.6 compared to if you combine 2020 and 2021, his average finish was 13.3. Still one of the best drivers in the sport without question, but I think he's just barely slipped out of that top three spot. Vaulting ahead of Kyle Busch in my rankings is his teammate, Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin doesn't have a championship. Kyle Busch has two of them. Busch has more career wins than Hamlin does, but in the last three years, Denny Hamlin has surpassed Kyle Busch as the leader, the statistical leader, at least out of Joe Gibbs Racing. Look at his average finishes the last three years. 9.5, 9.3, and 8.4, sub 10. He's won 15 races total across the last three years. He's peaking late in his career. He still hasn't won that championship, but he's been to four championship fours. I think right now, Denny Hamlin is locked in more than Kyle Busch. He's the third best driver in the Cup Series. Top two spots, this is getting tricky. At number two, Oh man, I could go a lot of different directions with this. I'm gonna go with Kevin Harvick. I know he was winless last year, but all things considered, Kevin Harvick was top five in points while all of his teammates, including veterans like Eric Amarola, were outside the top 20, and for most of the year, were outside the top 25 in points. That is incredible. I know he's the oldest full-time driver in the Cup Series, but with age comes great experience. And less than two years ago, 2020, back when SHR had good cars, the guy won nine races to lead the league. I mean, Kevin Harvick is still at or very near his peak. I think going into this season, he should still be ranked a top driver. I think he's the second best driver in the sport right now. But boy, it's tight through here. You can make some serious arguments for any of the drivers I've recently mentioned, but let's get to number one. If this list was best all around drivers in North America, Kyle Larson would be number one without question. But when it comes to stock car racers, there is still some question. There is still some lively debate. I'm putting Kyle Larson at the top of the list because after the year he had in 2021, 10 wins, he set a laps led record. I don't see how you don't have Larson at the top of your list going into this new year. He wanted a wide variety of racetracks. He wanted road courses like Sonoma, Watkins Glen, the Roval. He wanted short tracks like Bristol, Intermediates. He had some great moments at Chip Ganassi, like he won four times in 2017, but we always knew that the Ganassi cars were maybe holding him back just a little bit. We say this about a lot of drivers. Oh, if only they were in Gibbs equipment or Hendrick equipment, you know, oh, we'd see how great they really are. Kyle Larson actually did it. Like, he finally got in a championship caliber ride this year, and sure, that five car was probably the best or one of the best cars in the field every race, but he got that opportunity and did not squander it, did quite the opposite. He exceeded expectations last year in championship equipment, if that was even possible, winning 10 freaking times. So for now, at least, maybe it'll be short-lived, but for now, Kyle Larson, in my opinion, is the best, most talented driver in the NASCAR Cup Series. That's my list. I'm sure many of you have already left comments down below agreeing or probably disagreeing with some of my rankings. Again, I fully expected to make some enemies in this video, but it's sports. It's fun to debate these kinds of things. Who's the GOAT? Who's the best? Et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's at the heart of every sports debate, quite honestly. I thought it'd be fun to talk about before the season officially kicks off with Daytona this weekend, but thank you all for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR news, notes, predictions, and much, much more day in, day out here on Out of the Groove. I couldn't do the show without the amazing help from my Patreon supporters. I truly appreciate the support. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I will be out at Daytona this week and this weekend for the Daytona 500. It's my first time ever going to the Daytona 500. Can't wait to meet hopefully a lot of y'all out there. Can't wait to see the great American race in person and cover it for you guys for the channel. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly can't thank you all enough. I'll see you in the next video, y'all. Take it easy.